Hey, Robin, how are you doing? Good. How are you today? Good, good. You know, just uh, you know, adjusting to the world, uh, but more importantly, thinking about the future. Yeah, and, and that's the thing. I just got wind that you guys at Loud Haler have um, been tackling and really thinking through uh, the idea of contact tracing and that there may be a unique uh, opportunity to apply your technology to that particular issue. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, I think that right now, um, you know, as we're working through the, the, the current crisis and the stay at home businesses and the world, um, everyone is starting to think about the future. Right. And how how can we get back to work? How can we get back to, if not the old normal, at least some kind of new normal? Um, and a big part of that is about making people feel safe, safe to go out and that um, safe in being in large spaces, uh, crowded spaces, being out in public. And so contact tracing um, is, is starting to become a big part of that conversation. And I think for a lot of your audience members, they may not be as familiar with the term as those of us who are sort of really, um, really uh, deeply involved in, in this discussion. Uh, contact tracing for, for those who are um, uh, new to this uh, area and, and this topic is about being able to alert uh, individuals who may have been in contact uh, with somebody who subsequently tested positive for COVID-19 during the time that uh, that this person was, uh, you know, was transmitting or potentially uh, of communicating the disease, and and so it's a you know it sounds very simple um, in concept, uh, but it's uh, but it's actually very difficult to do because if you think about as you make your day, right? You're standing in line at the grocery store. You can't ask the names and contact information of the people that you're standing near them, or for that matter, you wouldn't want to give them your contact info. Um, just in the off chance that one of you tests positive and somehow will then you know, uh, contact each other. But the current system doesn't quite work either. Now, so in some states, uh, governors have actually suggested that people keep a notebook of their daily diet uh, activity and make a note of who they came across in their day. Now, um, you know, if you live in a rural area, that might be a little easier because you know who you, you're in contact with. But certainly in Manhattan, um, you know, that's just not that's not even realistic. Uh, then um, and some of the other states now, you know, when they talk about having tens of thousands of contact tracers, what they're talking about is when somebody tests positive, um, they will then you know, speak to them and basically help them try and reconstruct uh, a memory of, of what they did for the past 14 days and who they were in contact with and, and then somehow to be able to then manually follow up with that. So that's the public sector's idea of contact tracing. Well, uh, let me just, uh, let me interject here. So contact tracing, um, is not new, right? It's, I think the thing that makes it so difficult this time is, like you said, it's highly contagious um, a, a virus here. And it means the spread of it is so prolific, like it's so widespread that the numbers of people that are impacted just by passing each other in a short time make this all the more difficult. I mean, you can think of HIV as an infectious, uh, a contagious infectious disease, but your contact with someone has to be very intimate and you, and you pretty much can zero, you know, zero it into a particular period of time. Whereas with COVID-19, we're dealing with something that it's, it's exponentially bigger. And so technology is really important, um, could be play a really important role in having to um, be able to have a better trace of who came in contact with whom and when. Does that make sense? Yes, uh, absolutely. And and so we're looking at, you know, taking an old model of contact tracing and saying, how do we apply it in the world today in a world that's much more globalized, where travel was really quite easy, right? I mean, you could, uh, before, before uh, COVID-19, you could just go to the airport, buy a ticket, um, and go anywhere you wanted to in the world. I mean, it was really quite quite easy. And, and that has... Um, and this increased um, mobility um, then brings on with it, um, it, it adds 
layers of complexity from a you know contact tracing uh, standpoint because if uh, you know people from Wuhan going to other countries and, and back and forth and the people that they've been in contact with um, you know there was a famous case in um, in Germany where uh, there was a young woman from Shanghai who was in Germany and she was she was infectious uh, during the time that she was in Germany and the people in the factory who were with her um, were infected and they were like, well, how did that happen? And it turns out that her parents were from Wuhan. And when they visited her in Shanghai, they were inf infectious, but asymptomatic. And so, and then she was asymptomatic when she was in Germany. And that's, you know, so there is just, you can very quickly see, and then, you know, those German, ger German workers then went home and then the, the, the friends that they saw. Um, so it's just, you know, it's, it's, it's time to think about a new model for contact tracing. So t in today's world, you guys are experts um, in this subject matter. How is it today that um, if we were going to employ technology, technology that we already have in place, I mean, how are people thinking about doing it? And then compare that to how uh, Loud Haley and the Buki technology um, is trying to resolve this issue in terms of uh, contact tracing. Right. And I, I think I'll just sort of qualify that um, what we're expert in is on the technology side in mm -hmm. terms of thinking about um, how to capture that interaction, right? Because mm -hmm. what we're really, what contact tracing is really focused on is how much time and proximity did you spend with someone? Um, regardless of whether or not you knew them, because you could just been standing next to each other but talking right. to total people. Um, and to and and that really in, on some, in one level, we don't really care where that interaction happened because you could have been in a national park, you could have been in an office building. What we really are focused on is that short distance proximity. And that's where our technology comes in. Um, I think what's interesting is that a lot of, so you, you, know, you look at some of the other countries um, in India, for example, they do geofencing. So if you have their mobile app and you walk into an area that's a hot zone, they send you some kind of message and tell you to get out. Um, but that's not really contact tracing. That's about that's really geofencing hot zones. And then you have some other countries which are um, trying to cobble together uh, sort of you know various data sets like uh, your credit card purchase histories or your GPS location and whatever else to try and build this picture. Um, but I think that the challenge that the GPS um, approach has is you could get false positives. You, for example, so if you're in a large, uh, in a high rise building, and if you're on the first floor and somebody else is on the 20th floor and you never cross paths and you took different elevators, um, you know, you're much lower risk. But yet somehow with the GPS, you would show as you being, um, you know, having been in the same location at the same time. And then you also, um, and also as we know, GPS has its challenges if you're inside. Um, big buildings like convention centers, airports. And so those are all areas of concern. So the reason why we're um, experts in the space is because our technology connects people's devices directly to each other. And you, we use Bluetooth low energy. And so um, you have to be near each other at a, at a, uh, you know, within proximity in order to detect each other. And what's um, really interesting about our, our tech that makes it relevant for today is that we, our, our, our pairing is automatic. So meaning you can have our mobile app running in the background. So people don't have to have it actively open all the time. And because it uses Bluetooth low energy, it sips power. You know, we won't drain your battery like a GPS tracking app would do. And our connections are anonymous. So this way, if you're standing in the grocery store, people near you, you don't, you don't have to get their name, they don't have to get your name, and yet we can record that interaction. Um, it's also HIPAA compatible uh, because of the encryption. So not so if somebody wasn't on our software platform, they would not be able to detect who you are and, and be able to connect with you. You have to be within our system. And so, um, so the way that we connect people to each other, that they have to be near each other, and the secure and encrypted matter actually just turns out makes it a very appropriate and effective tool for contact tracing. And of course, most importantly, we're not tracking users' GPS location everywhere. Um, so we give users a lot of privacy, right? They don't have to show their name 
digitally to other people near them. We're not following them everywhere they go. We're not trying to get their credit card purchase information. It, it offers, uh, we believe, offers the users a lot of um, benefits. Wow, this is amazing. Um, and this wasn't the intent and initially with the technology, it's just one more use for it. Um, and I think that's pretty cool. So have you had any traction with talking with anyone about it? State agencies, federal government, private companies, like who would ideally benefit from this type of tool and use this way? Um, so what's important to note is that um, our tracing cover runs on a mobile phone and so it reduces the need for a venue to need to, um, you know, pay for additional hardware or pay for additional cards for every person on on site to to have to carry. Um, but it also means that we're more scalable. Um, so you know, I think that employers with large numbers of people, you know, not not a dentist office um, where it's a sort of a more finite group and you know who's coming in and out, but rather like say warehouses areas. Um, you know, large office buildings, um, but also uh, companies where shutting down a facility could mean loss of, you know, uh, many dollars, right? So if you were in an office building, you, you, if you could identify which elevators needed to be clean, it's a lot better than having to shut down an entire floor and shutting down the, all the elevator banks to because you didn't know. Um, and so we're talking to, uh, we are talking to a couple of state governments, um, but I have to say that I think the public sector is actually moving a little bit slower uh, in, the, in the space in terms of thinking about prospective contact tracing. Um, but the, in the private sector, we are talking to uh, folks in the military space. We're talking to folks in the aviation space, um, airports, uh, landowners, insurers, large employers. Um, this is kind of one of those things where every employer uh, needs to think about how they're going to make their workers feel safe when they come back. And then more importantly, if they service the public, not just a restaurant, but a convention center, a stadium, an arena, how will you make your guests feel safe? Yeah, that's really important. So if, if um, someone listening to this particular um, conversation wanted to get in touch with you, or wanted to find out more information, what should they do? Yes, so they could go to our website, loud, L-O-U-D dash Haler, H-A-I-L-E-R.com. Um, and we have a page dedicated to uh, contact tracing. So they can talk, um, uh, they can reach out to us there on the website. Um, but they can also, you know, we're, we're publishing um, a lot of information, uh, you know, as quickly as we can on, on this topic. And it's where, um, you know, there, there's so many things uh, that we can talk about in terms of the effectiveness of the tool, um, you know, how Bluetooth low energy works. Uh, what's interesting is we've been working on this for five years and thinking about these kinds of connectivity. Um, and, uh, and just as a footnote, we actually have patents um, in, in, this, uh, in this technology and, and patents pending in, in a number of jurisdictions. And so, um, so there are a lot of things that we can help employers figure out, you know, are they, is it a, is it, uh, are they mostly outdoors or are they a marina and, uh, you know, how is, how is their office building constructed? I mean, those right. are, all, those like a, are where, all, a warehouse or what, what is the situation and how can the technology be employed to support um, this ability to make the employees feel safe um, and to really curb the spread of a infectious disease? It's pretty powerful. Yeah. And I have to say, you know, it's, um, I have to say that the level of knowledge amongst employers is really varied. Um, there are some folks, uh, you know, some Fortune 100 companies that are all over this, and then others that are only just starting to think about it. Um, and I think that, you know, for your membership, everybody needs to be very aware of contact tracing. It's not just in the White House guidelines that were published about getting America back to work. AFL-CIO has put out a statement saying that you know, their members need to be protected. Um, and for us, it's what's interesting also is like uh, potential use in say a transit system, right? So we could actually identify somebody who tested positive, which bus they took, um, you know, at what time, who was the driver, 
well, who are the other passengers on the bus? I mean, there's a lot. And, but I think it's also important to note this is opt-in, right? So <laughs>、um, we're, we don't have any kind of tracking software. If people, don't, if people do not want to be part of the system, they don't have to.、Uh, but that's also why we're focused on the private sector and specifically employers、uh, and employees. Yeah, and I think one of the things that's come up since this pandemic and the high rates of death and incidents of、um, infection. They're so high that this is an opportunity to provide a couple of really important things. Number one,、um, the safety of the essential workers, the people that have to be out there, you know, having the ability to be able to retrace the steps and understand with some level of accuracy, some level of confidence、um, is going to be、uh, it's going to be essential because of how fast this, this、uh, thing spreads. And、um, the manual and the way it's been done in the past will, be, will need to be technology assisted. The question is how much of the privacy has to be given up to do it.、Um, and what you have is an amazing, narrowly tailored and focused technology that answers the mail. And I think that's what people are going to appreciate the privacy. Um, you know, respecting people's privacy, but yet also providing this huge benefit. And I'm excited for you.、Uh, I'm hopeful that people will hear this conversation and maybe it will spark them to want to have a consult with you guys and talk about their particular situations、um, and what they're seeing as their requirement in terms of contact tracing and how this can help get us all back to work. So I really appreciate having your time today. Thank, no, you. No, thank you so much. And you know, certainly、um, you know, look forward to、uh, continuing the conversation. And, and I think that,、um, I mean, you know, we could even talk about this in different sectors. I think、yes. the airline industry, but then separately the events industry, right? Any company that holds an event to do a product launch, I, they really need to think about all of this. And、um, I think that you, know, you making this、uh, information available to your Um, you know, to your uh, uh, followers, fans,、uh, <laughs> subscribers, I think is, is you're doing them a great service. You're really helping them to be ahead of the curve. Yeah, and we're, we're actually, because of you, able to enter in a relevant conversation and bringing diversity and diverse voices to the table answering this problem and, and quite frankly, giving it a look from a completely different perspective. And I think that's what's so powerful. So, so Jack, how quickly could someone get this network up? I mean, be able to use this technology in real life? Well, we can get them set up in a matter of hours.、Uh, all, they, all the users need to do, meaning the employees, is to download our Bookie app, which is available on the iOS and on the Android platforms. Then, if,、uh, if an employee Wants to do facility tracing in terms of understanding、um, how people are and where an infected individual may have been.、Um, then there is a hardware component, but still we could get them set up in a matter of days. And so we're as close to a turnkey solution you know, as you can get. That's really important because anything that requires integrating data from credit cards and GPS and every other movement. That's a lot of systems and a lot of money and a lot of time. And in the situation where we're facing this、uh, pandemic, we need solutions now and fast. So that's pretty cool. Yeah. I mean, there's no, you know, you don't, you don't need a whole team of thousands of people interviewing your employees. Ever, all everyone needs to do is download a mobile app and that's it. I mean, and, or you, you know, our, our software will even work on an iPod Touch. And so, If you don't want to、uh, give your employees uh, uh, mobile phones, you could just give them iPod touches because、uh, we're just、uh, you know, tracking through the Bluetooth that's,、uh, that's on the device. So thank you. Well, thank you.